Good afternoon. This is a regular meeting of the Cameron County Commissioner's Court. Third day of March 2011. It is now a little after 2 p.m. As we do all meetings, we will start with a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the U.S. flag and the Texas flag. And I'd like to ask uh, when the time comes to those pledges that the veterans that are sitting here with us today uh, lead us in, in those two pledges. So for now, please rise for a moment of silence, please. Thank you all. If there's no objection, let me um, allow me to take the item out of order having to do with the proclamation of the South Texas Vietnam Veterans Day. It's 4A, presentation of proclamation declaring April the 9th, 2011 as Welcome Home South Texas Vietnam Veterans Day in Cameron County, Texas. Before we do that, the, um, first of all, let me thank you all for being here. For those of you all that, that have heard me speak at the various veterans events, the, the one group that I single out, I mean, every, every time I, I remember is, is those Vietnam veterans. Uh, and the reason, obviously, is that, you know, when the Vietnam veterans went and they came back, they, you know, they were not welcomed back uh, appropriately. They were not welcomed back like, like we do our soldiers today and our heroes today. The Vietnam veteran was, was, uh, was welcomed back uh, under very, very auspicious circumstances. They were looked down upon. And these young men and women did what they were ordered to do and what many of them volunteered to do, which was to serve our country. So this is a, a very appropriate um, proclamation that, that we give. And I want to thank uh, you all that are here to accept it on the, on the Vietnam veteran's behalf. So with that, let me, let me read it. Be it resolved that on the third day of February 2011, the Cameron County Commissioner's Court convened in regular session. Consideration and adoption of a proclamation declaring April 9th, 2011 as Welcome Home South Texas Vietnam Veterans Day in Cameron County. Members of the Armed Forces of the United States stationed in Southeast Asia during the Vietnam War served our nation under the most trying conditions at a time when the, when the nation was divided in its support. The exemplary performance of Americans who served during the Vietnam War reflected the highest standards of bravery, sacrifice, and courage. One out of every 10 Americans who served in Vietnam was a casualty, and 58,148 U.S. service members made the ultimate sacrifice, 4,400 from Texas. Nearly 2,100 Americans are still missing and unaccounted for, and there were 660 military prisoners of war. 304,000 of 2.59 million who served in Vietnam were wounded. Approximately 75,000 were severely disabled. When these service members returned home, they were caught in the crossfire of public debate, protests, and turmoil about our nation's involvement in the Vietnam War. As a result, these brave men and women never received the welcome home, salute, and gratitude they justly deserved. All these men and women deserve our steadfast recognition and praise. The citizens of our nation, state, counties, and cities must never forget the pain and suffering that existed yesterday and today for the men and women who fought with honor and distinction and sacrificed their lives in the name of freedom and democracy for all. Whereas the South Texas region has united to work together to organize, promote, and host a long overdue historical tribute and event for all Vietnam veterans of South Texas titles Landing Zone, Rio Grande Valley, whereas the event will be a living memorial and conducted over a single day on Saturday, April the 9th, 2011, at the McAllen Convention Center, generating regional awareness, 
celebration, and acknowledgement of the Vietnam veterans who served those living and who have passed away. Be it proclaimed, the Cameron County Commissioner's Court proclaims April 2011 as Welcome Home South Texas Vietnam Veterans Day. To properly welcome home and salute our Vietnam veterans from South Texas, as well as commit our support to assist with the success of the LZ Landing Zone Rio Grande Valley event in Cameron County. Signed, third day of February 2011, by Sofia Benavides, Ernie Hernandez, David Gatza, Dan, Shant Dan Sanchez, and yours truly, Carlos Cascos. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is George Solis. I'm the 15th District Commander of the American Legion. And we know that Cameron County has always been in the forefront in support of issues that affect veterans. They're second to none, and we want to keep it that way. And we want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all you all have done and what you plan to do for us in the future. I know Judge Cascos has been there uh, with us in the past with the uh, Veterans Alliance and with other organizations when we started talking about the Veterans Clinic in Harlingen, which is now reality. And for that, we want to thank you for all the support that you rendered. Um, this LZ RGV, which is uh, proposed for April the 9th of this coming year, is for every single citizen of the Rio Grande Valley and including Zapata County. So we encourage everybody to come on and find out, educate themselves about Vietnam, the Vietnam era, the Vietnam conflict, and also to memorialize those individuals that, that lost their lives honorably in a foreign soil. So for those who plan to attend, we want to say thank you. For those who support the issue, thank you. And for all those who plan to help us in the future, thank you very much. You all have a good day. Judge, uh, county commissioners, uh, go ahead. I bring you greetings from our county judge, Ray Ramon, and the county commissioners. As uh, it was mentioned before, the LC project is, is long overdue. And let me give you some stats. As we stand here today, there's 390 Vietnam veterans that are dying a day. So you can see how, how important this activity and this event is going to be. We encourage the general public as well. We invite the judge and the county commissioners to join us on, on April 9th, on a Saturday, at, at 1 o'clock. It will start at 1 o'clock. And we expect a big crowd. It's going, to, it's going to be a fantastic celebration, as well as educating a lot of our families from our veterans. Everybody's invited, whether you are a Vietnam veteran or not, even uh, all the way from Laredo to, uh, to uh, Brownsville. We're going to have people coming from, from out of state, from within the state. So this is, this is a well-planned event. And I commend you for approving the proclamation today because you're sending a strong message to your community and other communities of the way that you support and are very proactive with veterans and their issues. Once again, on behalf of the, uh, the 80, 90,000 veterans that reside in, in our area, the lower Rio Grande Valley, we, we commend you and we thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amelia. Would anybody else like to say a few words from the from the veterans that are here? Commissioner Gatso? Uh, just one comment. You know, I want to thank this gentleman because if if anyone in the audience or anyone here was at the Harlingen ribbon cutting last weekend or last Friday at the Veterans Administration's new facility, you know, they expected about two, three hundred people for the event. I don't know how many they had, but there was well over 500 folks there. 
There was no place to stand or sit. And uh, a lot of that work and a lot of those services that are going to be provided to the folks most deserving are in direct relation to the work that you all have done for that facility. I, I personally want to thank you because it's been for many family members, you know, a blessing to have that facility there and look forward to the hospital soon to come as we often hear. So thank you for the work you've done and continue. We see the fruits of your work. Anything else, Commissioner Sanchez? I'd also like on, on my behalf, personally thank all veterans, Vietnam and, and all others. Uh, and I did attend last week um, the dedication of the, of the clinic and, and it was amazing. It truly was uh, all the people there. And to, the, to me, one of the most important things was to see you all there, the veterans, and, and the pride that you have when we do the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. I mean, it, it means something and it's not forgotten the dedication you've given to this country and your comrades that have fallen in the line of duty. So on, on behalf of myself, I personally thank you. And like Commissioner Garza said, look forward to working hard so that we one day have a full-fledged hospital in South Texas like you deserve. I've been involved with the uh, VFW for many years. I am not a veteran, but my dad was. He's 87 years old, and he still plays golf three times a week, and he goes dancing on Fridays. I look, I'm just glad he's here. He was involved in uh, many conflicts during World War II in Germany. And uh, I've always had a special place in my heart because a lot of my friends that I've known for many years are all veterans from here in Brownsville. And uh, we support the local VFW. I support you. I could have very easily been one of you. At my age, I'm going to be 59 years old. I just happened to be not called at the time. Uh, it could have had Carlos and I are the same age. It could have happened to either one of us very quickly. And uh, I can never express the gratitude for all that you did for all of us. And I, it's, it's about time that you're recognized. And uh, I was involved with the hospital issue from the very beginning, uh, trying to get it started as a city commissioner. We didn't get very far, but we kicked the can down the road, kind of, so to speak, and we kind of got it rolling. And, and y'all have done a wonderful, magnificent job to continue the process and get to get it to this point. And I, and I, and I respect all, your, all you have done. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, on my behalf, uh, I can tell you that uh, we are very grateful to you all for everything that you've done for our country. I can tell you that this court will continue to support you in everything that you do. Thank you. I remember the first uh, alliance meeting that we had in Westlaco, I think, and if you all remember that, back in 07, I think, was probably the first one that we had. We started talking about, well, we, we had to find the can that you guys were kicking, but we found the can, Good. and uh, we, uh, we started collaborating. And I think that it, it, would, it would be remiss of, of me and, and most of us that are here today if we did not address really how the, the, uh, the clinics in Harlingen evolved. And it was for, for one, uh, aside from getting the support at the federal level, that it was about time. Uh, all, all the veterans groups came together, the old, the young, and the not so young. But they all came together. We sat around a huge table in that room, and JD was there, and, and I remember uh, uh, Judge Barnhart was there, and I was there, and, um, and we uh, represent from, from uh, other counties were there, and we talked about uniting and, and speaking with, with one voice. And when we did that, we, did, we decided, JD at the time, and I, and, and Eloy Vera, and, and Barnhart, uh, decided at the time not to argue about where the veterans facility, remember Emilio? It, it, didn't, it didn't matter to us, but, what we, but the county judges had to put that, that, uh, that, that parochialism aside and say, you know what, it doesn't matter where it goes as long as it comes to the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas. And San Antonio is not South Texas. And we decided back then that we were going to support each other, whether it was in Cameron, Hidalgo, star, wherever it was going to be. And I think that was the impetus for, for getting people and our federal representatives to, to come to the table because they, they no longer had to argue about which city or which county is going to get it. So 
with that, I want to I applaud all the veterans groups that, you know, that, that left their, their egos outside, along with the county judges as well. And we, we worked for a, for a common goal, which was to bring a, a veterans hospital to South Texas. And I, and I think it's going to happen at some point in the, in the future. But for now, we, we have a great facility in Harlingen that continues to expand. 95% or more of the veterans that used to have to travel to San Antonio no longer have to. And that's a good start. But we can't let up. We need to continue the, uh, the effort and the fight. And I'm surprised that Eto isn't here. Normally, he's at all these things. And, and uh, please give him my best, because uh, him, along with every one of you all that, that is sitting here today, have been the, the, uh, the nucleus of, uh, of getting this veterans hospital down here and bringing to the forefront veterans' needs. We have a long ways to go, but we're going to, as Commissioner Benavides said, this, this court is, is committed to assisting in any way that we can, and, uh, and we will continue to do that. So, muchísimas gracias for everything that you've done. And you are uh, dismissed if you'd like to leave. Thank Judge. you very much. Judge. Hold on. Judge, I believe we have one of our own veterans, uh, Mr. Hinojosa. Our I engineer. just want to make a comment. Uh, sure, Neto, go ahead. If you don't mind. Well, we have a lot of veterans in the audience, yes. but go ahead. Well, I'm a Vietnam veteran, and, uh, and uh, uh, I just want to say to the group, thanks, and judge and commissioners. Uh, I was also a 19-year-old young man coming out of high school and uh, volunteered for service, volunteered for my country, and uh, spent a year in Vietnam. Uh, you were right. Uh, this is a long-awaited uh, time to wait, 40 years for me, never seen nobody ever gave us an opportunity to be thanked for. So I thank everybody. My, personally, I'm not part of the group. Uh, but you're right, I came home. There was nobody there. The only one at the airport was my mom and dad. And uh, that was it. Uh, it was an unwelcome war, but uh, I think we survived. And we're welcome the opportunity uh, uh, not only to address the veterans, but uh, for you all to, uh, for your all support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sure, maybe, sure. Thank you all very much. Thank you all once again. Do I hear a motion to go into executive session? So moved. moved by Commissioner Gatza, second by Commissioner Hernandez. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item carries. To discuss the following items. Confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning negotiations and contract issues with South Padre and Water Park pursuant to Code Section 551.0712. Item B, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning contract issues with Interlocal with South Padre Island to participate in a tax increment reinvestment in accordance with Code Section 551.0712. Item C, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning Dora Torres and Omar Lucio and others in district court in accordance with code section 551.0711 A and B. Item D, deliberation regarding the appointment and duties of the Cameron County Parks Director pursuant to code section 551.074.
Item E, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning contemplated potential litigation arising from the drowning incident in Santa Maria Park pursuant to Code Section 551.0711A and 2. Commissioner Garza, second by Commissioner Benavides, come out of executive session. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, item carries. Item A, uh, regarding contract issue with South Padre Island, do I hear a motion to acknowledge the report of uh, Mr. Bejarano and Council and proceed along the terms and conditions as discussed? So moved. By second. Commissioner Benavides, second by Commissioner Garza. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, item carries. Item B, uh, issues regarding interlocal with South, Padre, with South Padre Island. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge report of, um, I'm sorry, the, the item A was, was not with Bejarano. It was just with uh, Mr. Sepulveda and, and legal. Uh, item B is with acknowledge report of Mr. Bejarano and legal and the uh, county auditor and proceed along the terms and conditions as discussed. So moved. By Commissioner Garza. Second, Second. by? Second. Commissioner Benavides, any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item carries. Ooh. I felt like the Wizard of Oz. Like, ooh. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man standing behind the curtain. Uh, Dora, uh, item C, confers Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel, concerning Dora Torres and Omar Lucio, to hear a motion to uh, acknowledge report of counsel. And um, we don't say anything about the settlement or possible settlement and proceed on the terms and discussions as discussed. So moved. moved by Second. Commissioner Benavides and by Commissioner Garza. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. <coughs> Item D, deliberation regarding the appointment and duties of the Cameron County Parks Director. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge uh, Mr. Sepulveda's report? So and moved. to proceed along the terms and conditions as discussed, moved by Commissioner Hernandez. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item E, confer with Commissioner's Court Legal Counsel concerning contemplated potential litigation arising from a drowning incident in Santa Maria Park. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge report of counsel and proceed along the terms and conditions as discussed? So moved. moved by Commissioner Benavides. Second. Do I have a second by Commissioner Gatza? Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Public comments. We have one public comment, Mr. Uh, Robert Martinez. <coughs> How are you, sir? Can we make sure that the microphone is on? And can you speak a little bit louder okay. so we can okay. can? okay, I want to uh, have a mini special meeting from the Commission 51, which is uh, Port County, County Port. It's only possible for us. For Puente de los Lobos to open the alley. I already called to County. I already called to the County. County. I never I already called to everybody. Everybody said to come talk to your people to you can open it back, this area. The people not belong in this area, belong you people. You people close it, you can open them back. Okay, what, what area is he, is he talking about, global? Uh, port. Oh, that's a port of Brownsville? Yeah. He said, we already talked to everybody. Okay, everybody what is it that? The commissioners, county, county commission need to open it. He want to open it back, he can open it back. <coughs> we ask you help to open it back. We need 70 votes. The port, do it, we do it to the people. Okay. I, I think. I think, Judge, uh, just for clarification, I think he's referring to the area where they were having mud races or right next to the boat ramp. And I think all of that was closed off. Uh, but it's not our land. It's navigation, it's district. navigation district land. Okay, I already talked to the guys, me. I already talked. The, well, guy said, you, wait. the guy said me to talk to you. You're the fishing one. Give me area. You can do something about it to help the people to open it back, do something for people, or, or we need to come, everybody to come and meet him, who pressure. Robert, who did, who did you speak to at the Port of Brownsville? I talked to the Trusted Brownsville our owner, the Adi. He said to, to talk to the commissioner. But the who, commissioner. At, at the Port of Brownsville? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said, this area close, he closed the county, county port, Pali Island county port closes. But who are you the, pointing to? To Vega. 
You got a haircut, Don't Joe. Get over here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but who, let me ask you, who is the they? U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Is it the port or U.S. Fish and Wildlife? Who closed it? The Port of Brownsville did? Okay. Ujale, chingo. What was happening is, is it was creating a dangerous situation. People, the four wheelers coming out onto the highway, came coming out onto the highway. So TechSot asked us, we were gonna we were gonna put a, a post and cable just around the, the, the boat ramp. They asked us to continue it all the way down um, to that entrance where or exit wherever those trucks were coming out of, because it was creating a dangerous. Okay, so uh, so what has changed now that it wants to be reopened, and why do you want it reopened? People want to come back there. Can find Sandy. Is that like a fishing area? Can get food there. You know, yeah. people make barbecue peas. I'm sorry, but can we be discussing this? I think he's just allowed to make public comment. I don't but think we, we can, can, ask, en we can engage in negotiations. I mean, well, we're not yeah, negotiating. Not, I'm just trying to figure out, figure out where he's talking where, about. Yeah. Where he's talking about, so we can give instructions. Yeah, it's just to the north of the boat ramp, and what it is is um, it's port property. And there is other access points, um, just where we ended that post and cable. So, so they still they still can get in there. People can still get in yes, there. Sir. Okay. All right. Anything else? No, it's all right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other any other public comment? Anybody didn't get a chance to sign up? Okay. We've already done item A. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge the the uh, the proclamation that we did earlier? I didn't do that. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Garza. Second. Second by Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item B, presentation by Rene Molina regarding the 2011 plans for the Texas Mile. Is it Rene? <coughs> Commissioners, County Judge, thank you for seeing us today. Uh, my name is Rene Molina. I'm one of the board members of the uh, Coastal Bend Region Porsche Club. Uh, we've been hosting events at Cameron County Airport since 2001. And uh, we've had a really good relationship with the county and <coughs> North Pena, Pizza Pulver, the people that help us uh, use the facility. The last 10 years in the uh, motorsport community, I've met, had the pleasure of meeting quite a few people throughout the states, uh, some of which are here with me today, Jay and Shannon Mattis. Uh, they own Jane Shannon, uh, JNS Motorsports Promotions out of Houston. Uh, over the years, we've often talked about bringing a flagship type event the way they host in other areas to the area. And we started speaking about this with uh, Marty and Pete over a year ago uh, about bringing the, uh, one of these events down here and making Cameron County a, a home for the Texas Mile. Uh, with that, I introduced uh, Shannon Mattis, and I'll let her take over the presentation. Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you all for taking the time to uh, see us. And, and we have a few presentation documents that we're going to be handing out. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to be going through these through these documents and kind of talking through and expanding on some of the information that's in these documents. Did everybody receive a copy of those? Okay, fantastic. We're here today to um, present the Texas Mile and to discuss about requesting um, a use arrangement with uh, Cameron County. Um, we're requesting from Cameron County the use of the Cameron County Airport at Bayview. Um, our events have been a flagship event um, across the United States. We've been hosting these events in uh, Goliad um, County, uh, which is a few counties up from, from this particular area, at um, a location in which the Navy has uh, recently acquired back from um, Goliad County. We do have a um, license arrangement put into place with the actual Navy. So our experience comes from that we have worked with counties such as yourself um, on being good stewards of their property, um, as well as we've been working with the U.S. Navy. 
but in coming times, the use of that facility is going to be utilized for more training activities that they have, and they're going to be starting major construction um, here in the next few months that will be restricted to use. And we have been working um, as, a, as a friend and um, also in the racing community um, with Renee Molina, who has been down here and he's invited us to come down here. Um, what we're going to be requesting is the use of the facility in more open conversations about bringing our home um, for the Texas Mile to this location. Um, we have event dates planned for May 28th, 29th, 2011, and also October 20th and 23rd, um, 2011. The Texas Mile has been delivering the winning experience um, to our participants, to the communities in which we serve, and as well as to the uh, motorsports community throughout the United States for the past seven years in the national motorsports community. Our momentum has been supported by year-over-year -year growth in media exposure and economic impact. Um, the Texas Mile has become a very significant venue um, within the state of Texas, but also within the racing community. And it has become an American pastime enjoyed by thousands of people. Um, the Texas Mile is one of only seven recognized land speed organizations in the world. Um, we were the first to market organization to cater to the modern vehicle industry, supporting interest in production vehicles and aftermarket suppliers. We are also a recognized as the leading organization for timing, speed, capturing technology, and customer experience. To give you an idea of our event and the economic impact, because I think that's a major, when we come into a community, um, what's also at our heart about delivering the winning experience is not just that experience that the participants have, but the experience that it brings to that community. So it means what kind of economic impact can we bring to the community, as well as what kind of public relations and media exposure that we can bring to the community. So it's not just about the event, but about bringing other people maybe at other times to that community as well. At our events, what we also talk to our participants about and share with them is about coming early and staying late. So not just come for the event, but come to enjoy what is brought into that particular community. And so just to give you an idea, this event, we have um, 250 pre-registered participants. And in four and a half hours when we opened up registration, we filled up every single one of those slots that we had for the event. Started at five o'clock on a um, Sunday night. I had expected that it would maybe take 24 to 36 hours, because the previous time it took 36 hours, but within four hours we had filled up the event. Um, we have 20 paid staff, which we bring to uh, work the events, um, 30 volunteer staff all over from the state of Texas. Our registered participants are coming from 22 states, also Canada, Japan, and England. Um, and I have listed here the 22 states um, uh, for you to review. The estimated family and crew based on our seven year history. So each one of those participants brings about three or so people with them. And that's about a thousand additional people that come and they actually stay in the community and do other uh, activities in the community. The estimated spectators um, at the facility, and that was a location that is a community of 7,000 in all of Goliad County compared to your county. But our, our spectators come from all over the state and we have people coming from other states to come and spectate as well. And they plan their vacations um, around the event. And it's estimated family, well the estimated spectators based on the seven year history is about 3,000 plus people at the event. Um, the estimated hotels, and this again I say estimated, we've got solid numbers from all the hotels, you know, so heads and beds. Um, but to give and take some of those that we might be missing is around uh, 325 um, currently right now, and that's just from our, from our participant base. That doesn't even include the spectators that don't even weigh in on that. We also make sure that we are purchasing services and doing business within your community. Um, so the infrastructure and event professional services that we purchase from the area, we work with uh, tent and temporary structure companies, we work with you know, the porta potty companies, any of the heavy equipment, generators, um, RV rentals, um, 
radio systems, PA systems, ambulances, um, fire rescue crews, um, on-site catering services, um, especially um, from a security services standpoint, with any big event um, that's big on our mind, right, is for everybody to come and have a wonderful time. And so we think a big portion of that is making sure what we have there for security services. We provide satellite and Wi-Fi internet services as well. We um, authorize press credentials um, from, uh, and for this event alone, we have so far 10 press credentials, and our, our next upcoming event is coming in the end of March. Um, and we have one movie documentary crew that's coming out of California. And the 2011 season press releases, we had press releases issued, and um, hundreds of them on the internet and traditional news and media outlets. And just to give you an idea, if you'll turn to page two of the document, which is in your packet, the uh, past and current um, international, national, local news coverage and promotional coverage, you can go to our website, um, which is listed on here, which is uh, texasmile.net. And we have um, millions of visitors through social media, so we utilize the social media that also attract people to the area. Um, we partner with all the chambers of commerces. Um, we partner with uh, the uh, local government officials um, <coughs> and a lot of different entities within the area to help promote and make sure that our website promotes the area in addition to the event itself. If you go online and if you just do a Google search um, results for the Texas Mile, you'll end up with nearly three million hits um, alone on the Texas Mile. Um, if you narrow it down to the Texas Mile Goliad, um, which we would like it to be uh, the Texas Mile Cameron County, um, right now it's currently 171,000 uh, hits. And if you go to uh, YouTube, um, there's 5,000, these are not videos posted by us, but there's 5,190 videos with over two million hits on those. So we truly leverage a PR, a very strong PR machine that we have. Um, we've been on Speed TV, um, through Battle of the Supercars, um, an event called uh, Texas Muscle, and uh, that aired last year. But we'd also had previous um, exposure on Speed TV in about six or seven different episodes where they have come to our events. Um, automotive Magazine, Automobile Magazine, which is Automobile Automotive Magazine, um, we are on the front cover of the magazine in January 2011. Uh, with a fantastic multiple-page inside spread covering the Texas Mile and our participants. In addition to that, there's a whole list of other um, venues or, or articles or other locations, and I can provide you an additional list as well, in which we leverage to make sure that we continue to attract people to the area. And when we did a survey of the dollars spent just in 2010, 2010, as far as the economic impact is concerned, it was $5,092,350.36 5, Now I'm sorry, not the three cents, but, <laughs> but it, we, we definitely took a look at what our, what our participants are spending in the area um, for you know, their hotels, for their meals, for their fuel, for their convenience store items you know, the type of money that they're spending in the community. If you take a economic impact multiplier of 4.5, which is a conservative, you're looking at that just last year alone, that was 2.6 million um, economic impact. If you utilize one, and I retrieved this information, interestingly enough, a few years ago off of the internet, but if you utilize one that was utilized here in reference to the county Cameron airport, which it, it appeared to be a 7.1 multiplier, I'm not sure if that's the multiplier that you use right now, then the economic impact would be about 4.1 million um, to the area. The event continues to grow. Last year alone, we had 483 par participants, um, a little over 2,400 2, in crew, um, about 5,000 spectators that were from outside the area that we brought into, um, into the area. And we're very much interested in making this, um, making this our, our home. And Talking about being a good steward, um, some of the key items just on our event infrastructure, um, obviously is the experience that we brought to the table, but we also make sure that we're covering the county um, and you know, 
in this particular case, we're uh, working a negotiation deal with the, the Navy for this one-time event, but um, for future events for the insurance um, for the event to make sure that the county is covered. Um, we also provide for 24-hour security, which we will hire local law enforcement, whether they be from, uh, they need to be Texas peace officers, whether they be from the county or from the local police department or from DPS, but they will all be certified Texas peace officers from your community. Um, a lot of them depend on extra jobs um, for extra income, and so we like to be a venue that does that for the community. In addition to that, we will look at hiring um, medical staff. So we always have an MICU um, ambulance that's on location. Um, and then there's other infrastructure items that I, that I have here. But we have set up, as far as our infrastructure is concerned, um, public and media relations that would interface um, with yourself as the county um, to make sure that we're getting the correct message, the kind of message that your community wants to deliver to people that attracts people to your community, again, outside the event. Let's leverage our event, leverage our reach, but let's leverage also what this community has to offer and make sure we're delivering that message to people. And then we also do partner and, and partner recognition and promotion programs. So those are all aspects of things that we bring to the table um, that we would like to bring to, um, to Cameron County. Um, and our next event that we would like to seek approval for is in May, and then the next one after that is October. And then we'd also like to be able to have the opportunity to speak to you about different opportunities. We've had a management agreement underneath our entity called Texas Project Integrators, where we've actually brought in um, research and development projects that have been going on at uh, Shell um, Oil out of Houston. And there are certain different companies that are doing research and development that utilize these types of facilities, um, not for, for aircraft, but things that they need, you know, long runways and those types of things for. And um, so what we would like to do is definitely seek of being able to get the approvals that we need to be able to run here in May and October and make this our new home. Okay, any questions? Okay, you want to work with Mr. Sepulveda and then I guess get something on the, the good looking guy right there, the sports coat. Okay. Yeah, we'll need I know you're looking which good looking guy. <laughs> um, anyway, w work with him and, and uh, he'll, he'll bring something back to us at a, at a near future agenda for approval. Okay, uh, appreciate your, your for, for discussion. For discussion, well, For right. discussion and approval or not approval. But okay. this is not, but y'all have been there before, right? No. Oh, we've been there group. for. No, they have. In Not Cameron County? Fantastic. You've had an event in Cameron no. County? No, no, no. I thought you meant we've yeah. been Yeah, but, but who was the club that the, was the using the airport? Club, which is the NIST. Club, so you yes. guys. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we, we've been there for 10 years doing our events, and we'd like that's to That's what I thought. Back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Since and this, this is a flagship event um, that we're bringing to the area, and uh, we've been talking for several years, and he said, you really need, we have so much to offer here, and you really need to look at moving your event. And we've uh, built it to that point where we were going to look at starting with one, but then some recent developments had said, okay, we're gonna, we, we need to move our home immediately. Uh, we have had experience with Mr. Molina's organization that he's involved with for 10 years now. Right. And it's been a very positive experience for the county in bringing in uh, not necessarily so much a revenue source, but in uh, a location that they can do what they do out there. And it's adults having fun pretty much. You know, Absolutely. and they bring and our, and our goal has always been to get people <coughs> off the street and onto a safe right. environment where they can enjoy their vehicles and yet not put the public at risk. Right, and, and it's been, it's worked very well for the last 10 years. The difference being with this type of event, what they do now does not require the airport to be shut down as an airport. What, what this event does is for a three day stretch, they would require the long runways that we have out there, which would mean that the airport would have to be closed for that three-day weekend. And that's what the court needs to make sure. And, and is that the Memorial Day weekend? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And the yes. one in October is Halloween? Or? No, no. Halloween. Halloween's My on birthday. the 31st. <laughs> Your birthday? It's a, it's a weekend before. <laughs> okay. But I think, I think, you know, we have a facility out there that is much underutilized. I know two years ago we had some visitors that Rene also had, had brought in 
and there was a group from UK that was interested in doing something like this on a weekend basis where they brought just international folks to do. Uh, for whatever reasons, that didn't pan out, you know, because of the logistics. But I think this would give us an opportunity to provide a venue to Showcase. the locals right. that mm -hmm. we don't get down here unless you travel to Goliath <laughs> or further north. And, uh, and, and speaking, of, if you don't mind me interjecting, because one of the things that you brought up here at the very end, one of our key areas is, and you'll see it on our website, but um, is, is in honor of God and country, and that we like to utilize our events in regards to, especially for our military um, personnel, um, as a venue that recognizes, that recognizes them and the contribution, because we get to enjoy these kinds of events because of what they, the sacrifices that they've made before us and the sacrifices that they continue to make. So we aren't, with any community that we work with, we're always open to suggestions and that partnering, that collaboration, I think you had said, you know, that you had picked up the tin can, right? <laughs> and started really collaborating. That's what we want to do with communities when we come into a community is collaborate and say, what are your needs? How can we leverage the audience that we have to help meet those needs and help to expand on your programs that you already have in place and help to make a difference? And so those are things that, for me, as far as, you know, my husband and I got into to motorsports because he's a racer. <laughs> it's what he loves to do. And I, I, you know, went along also with my husband because I, I love him, but I have loved the people that have gotten involved, and I think that we can truly leverage those types of things. And within the community, I'm a small town Texas girl and, and grew up in that and understand community. And that's a key heart and soul of our events, right? The, the going down the runway is just a portion of it. It's about the overall experience that people have, and that includes the community. And that's something that we want to collaborate with you on how can we leverage this event? Yes, to make an economic impact to your businesses in the area, which makes a difference to the small businesses, not just you know the big, the big businesses, but to your small businesses that are here supporting your community. How can we make an impact to any of your programs that you have going on where we can showcase them and get an outward reach outside of this community? So I'm sorry to interrupt you, yeah, but it's just and, something that's- And you know, to say that plus, we need to make sure we collaborate, and I've had a discussion with Mr. Sepulveda in regards to the shutting down of the operation for three days, making sure that we talk to the FBO people out there that we have, and, and make, and it, we as, also have make it as uninterrupted in as possible for the air traffic that does come in. So, The only thing I would add is when you look at the liability issues, make sure we have enough insurance to cover uh, car going off the track and maybe injuring someone. We do. Okay, well, yeah, we, um, make sure we, legal. We work, we work, and we work with, um, like I said, this is uh, insurance that we work with counties such as yourself um, from that particular, and we are with the largest motorsports insurance um, provider um, that's out there as far as certificates are concerned. And we've been gaining certificates for the past 10 years. Um, Great, so thank you. Def that's key thing, right, is yes, we wanna have fun, but at the end of the day, I always tell my, my emergency medical crews, I said, I pay you to be glorified spectators, but I want to know that I have the best on the best on the ground. So if something were to happen, one, first, that participant's taken care of, but that we're all also taken care of, and we know that we've done our best to make sure that if there's a worst case scenario, we've got it handled. All right. Okay. I'll just get with uh, Mr. Sepulveda. Okay. Bring, bring it back to us, okay? Okay. All Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I hear a motion to acknowledge presentation so by Commissioner Garza. Second. Second by Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? Item carries. Item C, presentation and discussion by GDF Suez regarding potential alternative energy projects in Cameron County. Judge, can we table this item? Uh, Do I hear a motion to table? Problems coming in. Do I hear a motion to table? So moved. By Commissioner Garza. I have a second. Second. By Commissioner Benavides, any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, item carries. Consent items, are there any items any member of the court wish to take out and discuss separately? Z. Item Z. Z. Z, like zebra. Z is in zebra. Uh, we were gonna discuss double 
Item Z, double I. Double H. Anything else? I'll be abstaining on item C. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, hearing none and sensing I'll none? I'll be abstaining in Z, Z. Zebra, zebra. C, C? Double C Z. Like in zebra? Oh, double Z. Z. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve consent items with the exceptions of item Z? Item double H and double I, which will be taken out and discussed separately. Also noting my abstention on item C and Commissioner Gatz's abstention on item double Z. So, so here a motion to approve by Commissioner Hernandez. Second. Second by Commissioner Gatz. Please noting the abstentions. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Item double H. Well, Z. I'm sorry, Z. <coughs> Item Z, consideration authorization to execute a license agreement between Cameron County and Schlitterbaum Beach Water Park for the use of spring break event parking. The, the question I had on that was, were the, they're wanting to enter into a contract for parking, but don't they have an outstanding parking bill with this? Yes. Um, have they paid that? No, no. They, um, I mean, we haven't. We haven't worked out the agreement on the parking, um, the parking lot. Is that that's what you're asking, correct? Right. Yeah. So, is this the same parking lot in question that we've been talking about? The the, the event. The no, no. The, the event um, is is in the parking lot. Okay. And what they're asking for is they're asking for land at additional land uh, across the road that's vacant for to park cars for the event. Um, they want to have a, a spring break concert. And, um, and the reason that, that I had, um, I'd, I'd put two items, one in the executive session and one, uh, this one. And I left the, I left the, the a section blank, which was the compensation, because um, I didn't know whether, on our standard license agreements, there's a $65 nominal fee. Okay? But I just, Dilby and I were talking, and we thought that maybe the commissioner's court wanted to, to request uh, a larger amount. Request or impose? Impose. <laughs> now, <clears throat> all right. I mean, the, our issue, and I think Judge, um, Commissioner Garza agrees, is that um, if they owe us money on parking, why are we going to contract with them to give them more parking if they haven't paid us what they owe us? I agree. I mean, we were in executive session discussing this issue for the what's occurred in the past 18 months maybe or so, and now we have a request to move folks that are utilizing a track of land. They want them to move boat trailers off of there so they can use it for their event when we're not and have not been made whole on what we're owed. Mm -hmm. And this is not new to us. This has been ongoing. What's your recommendation? Well, <clears throat> I know that, I mean, this is going to be ongoing until we, we both agree to something and negotiate. Um, I mean, this is, this is an opportunity to, to make some money, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, you know, with, with Slitterbond. And with this, with this event, <coughs> um, they're going to bring down thousands of people for, for spring break. Now, um, we're going we're gonna to gain the 5% or whatever their gross sales are for that event, plus whatever we, we request or impose uh, for this parking, parking area. Now, what, <clears throat> what they're going to do is, um, uh, I mean, they're, they're requesting the parking. They may not need it because um, a lot of the traffic that's going to be going to this event is probably going to be shuttled. Um, Red Bull has uh, shuttling service, uh, but they want to have a, a – um, that, uh, backup plan in the event that the parking lots in town, um, the parking lots in the area get, get uh, full. Where is this event going to be taking place, first of all? Slitterbond. 
In the parking uh, lot? In the, in the parking lot. That they haven't paid the rent on. In, in right. the park? Yes. Or in the parking lot? In the parking lot of Soderbaugh. Have we authorized okay. them to have well, an event? You know, that place, is, that place belongs to the county. Do we have an agreement with them for that event to occur there? Not, not a special agreement, no, sir. Well, I mean, how can they have an, an event? Every event that occurs on the island, we approve through an agreement with whoever wants that event to occur. Whether it be flying an airplane over the island that leaves the airport, or whether it be you know, a venue that goes to the flats next to you know, wherever. I mean, we always approve those events. Kind of like the people that just presented right before you came up. I mean, have we been asked if we're wanting to host this on our parking lot there? Uh, they did approach us and they did uh, ask or tell us that they were, they were looking at bringing in Red Bull. It was a consideration. It was going to happen somewhere on the island. Um, Slitterbond uh, was part of some or discussions. Um, they, and Red Bull chose uh, Slitterbond as being the best location. Um, they did contact us. Um, you know, we didn't agree to anything, but um, they did. They did uh, advise us that they, Red Bull was looking at Slitterbond as one of the sites. Because they're, according to, to this, it's scheduled for the parking lot area. <coughs> okay, and due to the size and production requirements, it eliminates the majority of all the parking. Right. Which means that they're going to take 4.2 acres of county property and use it for free. Are we going to do that with anyone that wants to do any event on the island? I mean, we're, don't we need an agreement of some sort legal? OK. Is there a perpetuity or renewable clause or something on there? No? I would not be in favor of hosting another event on a piece of property that is still uh, in, dispute. in dispute. Well, it's in dispute. They're not in dispute. It's just like they owe us money. They just don't want to pay. So by us saying, yes, have your event, even though you haven't paid us, slap me again. You know, we're saying, OK, maybe the contract, you know, I mean, we're, we're agreeing to something that is that I don't agree to. I don't know about the rest of the court, you know. And not only that, they even want to use track three, the other side, where visitors that go fishing park their trucks and trailers to. And they're asking us to tell them to remove them so that they can use that area so we can accommodate their event. Well, that makes sense. Then do I hear a motion to deny the execution or to table the uh, execution of the license agreement as presented? I would move that we table it until something is worked out and the county is made full. Okay, I hear a motion by Commissioner Garza to table. Second. Second by Commissioner Sanchez. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say bye by saying aye. 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 Opposed, Adam carries. Thank you, Javier. Item double H, consideration and authorization to award bids, RFPs, RFQs for the pickups. Mike, I just have a, I think I have a couple of questions. I guess I couldn't read your, your deal right. They, we, had, we had three bids for, for vehicles, uh, one a local company, the two out of, out of county. And let's talk about the, um, the first one. Uh, did you look at the difference in terms of trying to do it local? And, yeah. and it was beyond the threshold, yeah, beyond correct? Okay. And on the other, on the other one, the um, it, the number one you said did not meet the specs. Again, there's an asterisk there. Below. That's correct. The and wh wh what part of the specs did they not it, it meet? Says, it says their color. Okay, and so so. It says what? It says on their color. Right. So so we're going to spend almost two thousand dollars more because it didn't meet the color requirement. And we we discussed that in detail with the department. Uh, the what, what, what color did they want? They, they, they wanted a blue color. The and color that both of these vendors that do not meet spec on is white. Is, Would is you what? like to address this also? White. Simply. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean it's two grand, forget a blue right. car versus a white car. The simple reason why is because it's 
car will be used in some undercover operations. And so blue is you can't see blue. Well, darker but, color versus a white. Right. Yeah, it makes white sense. Oh, it's a na it's a navy blue co color. Yes, sir. That was my only question. I mean, come I on. Understand. I need that question. I mean, two two grand to get a white versus a navy. So I guess what I'm hearing is a navy blue is is more undercover oriented than a white car. Well, it's not. It's just sitting out there. It's gonna it's like I said before. Maybe in a completely dark area, no lights, no nothing. Well, I mean, or if you're you, undercover, the, you don't the, park the under the lights. That, the problem <laughs> on that is. We don't get to choose exactly where we're going to have our undercover operation. All right. You got to go follow the criminal wherever he's at. All right. I just, just know for the record we're. Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. Do I hear a motion to approve? So uh, moved. Moved by Commissioner Sanchez, second by Commissioner Benavides. Any discussion? All those in favor, please stand by by saying aye. And the other that him carries. Double aye. Consideration and issuance of order approving the treasurer's financial report for October 2010. Did you want to? Yeah, the question is just, you know, I mean, legal, I just want to do whatever legally we need to do. You know, just tell us what the process is and what we need to do and what dates we need where. The problem comes in with the cover letter that he submits with the report to the commissioner's court. The date that he puts on there December 17, 2010, is actually the date that he submitted it to Martha Galarza, the county auditor, for her review. That cor that's it's, correct, right? It's a date that, that the, uh, the court in, in probably the summer of 2007 had, had asked that I do that to put it in the agenda. And they require, as you know, uh, they require your signature on, to put on the agenda and, and the, the auditor. And the auditor won't sign until she reviews it. And at times, sometimes, uh, Commissioner Garza, it takes her, uh, as you can see, from the 17th of December till the 17th of February, uh, two, three months, well, two months to, to review that report. And, and so I put the date that the, the agenda packet basically was ready for you all. And, okay. and you all have requested and I, to that. Me, you know, I and really now we, we discussed this on January 20th, the minutes that you all are about, I think, about to approve. And on January the 20th, we went through this, and the court as a whole agreed that, that it was okay. Now, if you all want to change that, no, I mean, that's fine. I don't want to change anything. I just want legal to tell me yay or nay, and that's it. You yeah, know? But at that time, she, she... The dates, I really, I, I don't care, because yeah, I don't right. know the legality. Well, I just we, want to know from legal. The, the only, the problem comes in is if when you accept this letter as being correct, it's not. This is not correct because that's not the correct date that he can has given Mr. this Smith. report. Excuse me, I am yeah. speaking. Okay. When I'm done, then you can okay. speak. When he gives you this report, it was not on December 17th. That's the date that he submitted it to Martha Galarza. And so if you accept this, I mean, just this, it's only the, co the cover letter. That's the only problem. It's inaccurate. And when you give it to the the county clerk for the minutes, you're, you're submitting something that's got inaccurate information. Okay, but I so think you can the court gave, gave you, can, you can approve could this I, report could I ask and just not not accept the cover letter, and that's or, fine. Or you could accept it as a whole as you did on January the 20th, and everybody agreed to do that. Now, Mr. Smith, if you want to help me out a little bit on this, or? I, I don't think he has a, I don't, he doesn't yes, have, have he's, he's a, the attorney for the department. For the treasurer's office? Yes. Okay, Isn't he? I, I did not know that. Well, I mean, he's for every department. Are you? He's a county attorney. Right. She's, she's your... I don't no, I, I don't think it is correct. Right. I think that look, the whole issue is this: that I don't know about it. I, I know the date on the agenda is is um, is dated February the seventeenth. That's when it gets placed on the agenda, and I guess the question is, 
uh, my question was that the transmittal letter says to Cameron County Commissioner's Court, right. dated December 17th, right. right? That's not when the Commissioner's Court received it. Technically would have received it when well, this agenda item. I don't know if. if that's the, that's the asked, day you signed this letter. That's the day right. that you because, signed because it. Because this is a process which you all have said, I, I would have to put something on the agenda. So uh, I guess she's acting now. I don't know why the auditor takes so long. He might want Mr. Commissioner well, Goddard. Well, you know, David, might, I don't no, know no, about wait, why she finish? takes so can long, I, but I mean. May I finish? Yeah, can I, I mean, look, the, I don't want to be start throwing stones as to why she takes so no, long right, because right. because this but, report is is due five days after the the end of the month. Well, and, everybody's report. I mean, uh, well, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about this report, and and it comes in by your own date, December the 17th, and this is the October report. So this in itself is 45 days late from the time well, it gets turned in, okay? We, we, but I, we're not there to talk. I'm, I want to, my only concern is this. I think that if you'd have put to Marta Galarza with that date, that'd be an appropriate date. But it's not to the commissioner's court. It makes so, it look okay, like he then, took two and a half months then I no to put longer it on the have agenda. To I no longer well, have to turn it in to her and get her approved before I turn it in to you all. Well, is I that think, what you're asking? You know, but I, what I don't is know, the I, last date, Judge? I'm sorry? Is this supposed to come to us or is it supposed to go to, to Mrs. Galarza? It's supposed to go directly to you all, but in, in the summer of 07, Judge, you requested, uh -huh. I don't know, maybe Commissioner Benavides, if you were here, maybe you remember that, they requested that I turn it in to them, to her first, or where, there was a different auditor, she, she worked for the auditor's office, but, but you all requested, well, basically you, Judge, requested that I do that before I bring it here. Yeah, and, but we're talking about, the, we're talking about the, the, the turnaround about the, the is, is two months. Now, But whose turnaround? The turnaround from, from her to, and, well, to but, me. But, but yours and too, then, though. And then, yeah, well, fine. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. The turnaround from her to me then is two months in this case. And and then by the time, especially now, you're only meeting every, every other week. Uh, by the time, uh, we, the deadlines pass for putting stuff on the agenda, and then I have to wait another week. So, if you can see, well, if you see this, what I want to know is, you know, I mean, what date do we need on there? Well, simple. Th look, th this is the bottom line. We need to correct this. I've actually spoken to Bruce. The report is due by you to us five days after the end of the last month. Okay. And what Sam was saying is exactly on point. We don't have the mechanism in place, but I talked to Bruce about fixing that where we get a stamp file, like when you go to the county clerk's office or district clerk's, you have a stamp file. It says received on this date, okay? We need to implement a procedure where you turn it into the court. At some point after that, it can get placed on the agenda for review, sure. but it's supposed to be filed with us by the fifth day. So to avoid the problem of it's gotta go to Martha, it's gotta get approved and then sent to us, Martha under the statute has to make her own report. Right. You have to submit yours and then it's up to this body to, to reconcile. reconcile and approve the report. And if something's wrong, we're supposed to correct it. Okay, so then now you all are, want me to turn it in to uh, Mr. Sepulveda's office? Within five so days that, after a month end. Okay, Mr. Sepulveda's office in order for him and then the stamp date it and then you're and done. And that's it. Yep. Okay. And, and you're and, and you're done now. The reason I know I was right going, now she's, uh, the, the auditor has about three three reports that. Well, I don't Br bring them all and, and submit them. You submit your reports. Her okay. job is is okay. the checks and balances. Sure, sure. And then she'll report to us as well. Okay. That way you're not having to wait to report to us. You so report. So he's going to stamp date it received. That. Well, I think the the clerk our. Clerk. Well, but I think the reason it was going to Martha was because there was tr there was a, there was a vague attempt to try to reconcile those accounts. I mean, even even in this report here, there's there's 1.6 million dollars that there's a difference between her report and your report, and I don't know which which number's right. Well, I don't know if she's reporting the JP accounts, which are not under I, my I, direction. I, I don't know, and and I think we can ask her that. I know but she I think hasn't in the past, but I don't know if she's doing it now. I think I, the that issue might is be the, the difference. Not the filing, you know, what's in the report, but the correctness of the time. Right? We're, we're concerned right now about how it's supposed to be done, sure, not right. whether it's right or wrong. Right, right. So, so I'm just asking, you know, give me an established procedure. Okay. And I'll turn it in, and, and you got it. That's it. But basically, follow the statute. And the statute says, file it with us by the fifth day. Now, we're not always going to have a meeting within the fifth day. Right. 
But the way we cure that is, I think the clerk of our court is this lady right here. So you bring it to her, she'll stamp it. Once we have that, then Pete can say, okay, I have the treasurer's report. We're gonna put it on the next agenda uh, that's available. We'll look at it. The auditor will file hers as well. And if there's some discrepancies at that meeting, we'll call you up and say, okay, what, you know, what are the issues here? What are the problems? Let's fix them. But I think that's the way it's supposed to be governed, not you turn it into her, she, she corrects it, and then she puts it on the that's agenda fine, or whatever. Great. That's great. And then and I we think we'll avoid this <coughs> problem. Okay, so then, Pete? Just to clarify, okay, the treasurer's office will submit it to the county clerk, they'll stamp it. Is she, or the county clerk gonna take it to our office to place an agenda or, or who's gonna actually place it on the agenda? No, I think, I think you need to place it on the agenda. It doesn't matter, well, it does matter because we don't want to get, she thought she did, we did. No, I think once it's filed, notice, if you could give him notice, uh, David, give Pete notice that you filed it with her and then you can pull it from her and, or if you want to email him a copy or however you want to do it and then you put it on the next agenda. But there's several county offices, anybody that collects money from the county is supposed to file a report with this court by the fifth day, not just you. So, you know, there's some things that we need to make sure we're gonna clarify and everybody get on the same page. So this filing system will basically avoid all the problems of this date, that date, or the other, because we're gonna know when it was filed. Okay, then I'm just gonna request then that, that basically you set out the procedure to, for, you know, uh, basically I'm gonna uh, do what the law says. Now you That's give me the procedure, tell me who to turn it into either to Pete the clerk. or to the, the, clerk. Clerk. the clerk. She's the or clerk of our court. Because there's a lot of confusion and we're still, you know, adjusting it. It and just goes fine. straight to the and clerk. And I think that has hurt yeah. the, the whole Legal, what do you think about that? I mean, is that a way to solve the problem and be in compliance with the statute? Yes, I think I think that would work, right? That Pete would, um, once she file stamps it, she gives it to Pete and then you, you want Pete to put it on the next agenda, correct? Yeah, right. Okay. Now, okay. One, so one I'm percent. done. That day, the day that I turn it into to, to the clerk's office with I did here, and that's it, I'm done. I don't have to. Well, no, you'll still I mean, have to present it to, yeah, to at, when sure. we have it as an agenda item, sure, sure. then you'll have to come up no, and I present know, but it. I, but as far as, then he, you're gonna notify me when it's gonna be on the agenda, or? Will it be on the agenda? Will it be a post? I mean, agenda. every, every, ag I'm sure you. Every you, agenda you, gets posted and you yeah. be on the lookout. Yeah. But, and, it, and at that point, like, for, that, like with this report, there's 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 a 1.3 million dollar difference between a variance between what Martha has and what you have. No, so who can tell the court what that difference is and which one's good, and which one's the right number? The report that I give is the monies that are under the the, the accounts that, that I have that you all have authorized me to be in charge of. Now she has another account. She has 10 accounts with the JPs. That's that might be the one point one three million i don't think so or okay, else we're not comparing she, apples to apples okay well i don't know either that's why we'll, well, th that, well, we'll see that, we'll, that, that, we'll, that's why y'all need to get well, together we'll look at it. and we'll, reconcile sure. that that number and that that's okay. why it went to martha so y'all could reconcile the number okay so now well, we have a, the okay, procedure so. we we got the procedure and and we'll, we'll and and, and it, it can be simply okay. done the filing requirement is by the fifth by day the per day. statute oh, yeah. period now after that, and before it actually makes it to our agenda, you can get together with Martha, sure. and you can reconcile and right. look over and make sure that you're on the same page, well, and if there's issues, we do that, uh, uh, right, and if there's issues, by the time it gets to our meeting, and we do see the differences, then we could say, you know what, what's the issue here, and you'll be able to say, oh, you know what, I had this number, she had this number, but we've looked at it, and herein lies the problem, or this is why we came out different, and I think that's the way okay. the, the, intent of the statute is to be followed. Okay. One, one more issue, uh, Mr. Betancourt. Uh, there was an issue made to you about that's being addressed to the commissioner's court. Is that gonna be fine? It, yeah. yeah, if, if we get it on fine. that day, yeah. it's stamped. Okay, yeah. it's stamped, that's but okay. it's made out to Cam Cameron County Commissioner's Court. There's no discrepancy, there's no argument. I think that's, that's great, that's great. And, and the date that's valid is gonna be the stamp file date, not right. what's the on the letter, because even right. looking at this letter here, all that means is on that day he signed this letter. When right. he actually tendered it, we don't know. Right. Because we don't have a system in place to keep a filing record of it, which we're gonna put in place. 
Okay, so before she does, but she does that with all things that go into her office. Okay, well, if, if, the, if the court is ready mm -hmm. to uh, approve the report, I still want to know what, what the discrepancy is or the, the, the variance between what you show, Marta. Is, is it the JP stuff that's in there? The JP accounts that the treasurer is referencing that I have, those are not my accounts. Those are the JP uh, accounts. But are they in here? They're not in here. I this didn't is, think so. This is the treasurer's report. So right. Well, they're not supposed to. Hold on. Hold on. Correct. They're not in here. Okay. Because I think what, I think what Mr. Bencourt said. Well, it might be off because of the JP accounts. But the JP accounts are not in here. So, or else, and if they would be, then you wouldn't be comparing apples to apples. So, have you been able to determine what the discrepancy is? Some of these discrepancies, the majority of these discrepancies on these accounts between the balance that the treasurer has and the balance that we show on the books are due to timing variances. Uh, at times, there will be funds that are invested in, in, um, in uh, first public funds, and the treasurer will pull out money from a fund and deposit the funds in the bank account. And when the treasurer does these transactions, then they need to notify us that we need to book the entry on our books on the county's financial system. So at the time that we get the information from them, that is at the time that we book the transaction. So some of those variances will be accountable for that. Some of the other variances are due to checks that uh, have been voided and either the treasurer has not booked them as being void <coughs> on their bank balance and we have posted the entry or vice versa. So that will also cause a variance. So you need timely from him on changes and you need to timely tell him if there's voided checks too so he can void them on his system. Some of those are some of those issues. Uh, sometimes also there will be deposits that get made in the wrong account and they are booked on our system by the treasurer's office is going into a particular fund when in essence they did not go into that fund, they went into another fund. So their books will show one balance and ours will show another because there is a variance there. And uh, these are variances that, that we are addressing and, and trying to address with Isabel, with the treasurer's office, so that we can reconcile these variances. Some of these variances have rolled forward for a year, nine months, six months. See, those variances should wash out every month. That is correct. Okay. Every month they should wash out. They shouldn't be perpetual. It's like having a, a, a perpetual deposit in transit. Deposit in transit, you know, clears within one month. to three business days. Yes. It doesn't go on for a year as a deposit in transit. An outstanding check, that's different. That could be outstanding for mm -hmm. who knows how long. But deposit in transit clears right away. So the ones that would bother me then would be the ones that are, that are ongoing perpetual differences that never get cleared out. That is okay. Correct. So then if, if we were going to close our books, which we are closing our books on, on no, this October. 30th. September it says, 30th. Okay. Which, which number is the right number? No, which, which number would somebody says, oh, you've got 43 million, or no, you've got 41 million. Which is the right number? The affidavit, the way it's issued, it is based on the bank and the first public balances at the end of the month, because that is what is in the bank. And that's what he's supposed to turn in, what's actually there, right? I believe so, yes. So if there's a discrepancy, it's on the accounting side that you're dealing with. But from my understanding, his report is supposed to be a snapshot of what is in the account at that time. Am I the, incorrect? Th there are other, if you'll notice on the balances, there are differences between the treasurer's balance and the uh, bank balance as well, okay? Uh, some of those are due to adjustments that need to be made, either either pull money from the particular fund that's in the bank and put it into another fund. There, there are adjustments, okay? So if you're saying that you're going to use the balance that the treasurer has on his books, that is not necessarily the case at the end of the month. That is due to adjustments as well. Because what you're, if you're going to go by the balances that the treasurer carries on their books, those are balances that are uh, manually reconciled on an Excel spreadsheet, and they do not necessarily tie to the financial system, and they, they have a number of adjustments in order to, to, that they use to tie back to what the bank balance shows. Mrs. Galarza. Yes. Okay. I want to know. 
At the time that you get these and you find discrepancies, who do you go to in the treasurer's office to try and make uh, corrections or whatever is needed to be done? We have auditors assigned that work all of these individual funds, and those auditors will communicate with Isabel, who prepares the reconciliation and who does the actual and, reconciliation. And, and I understand that. But I think that there has been a lack of communication on both your part and the county treasurer's part, okay? And I think if, if, if he's responsible for signing something and you're responsible for, for whatever you do, then I think you all need to talk to each other, okay? And for whatever reason, I, I think there's been a lack of communication. So I really think that you all need to work well together to make sure that this gets done. You know, it's like Isabel, yeah, Isabel, but Isabel is not the county treasurer, okay? And you need to speak to him, and he needs to speak to you too, you know? Because, I mean, ultimately, then all the time that David brings stuff over here, it's, there's gonna be something wrong with it, okay? So that's the way I see it. So I really believe that you all need to work a lot better together, you know? Like this deal with this, the, the date, who cares about the date, okay? And well, I another way that it could have been handled I is care if you could put I want to be legal. the right date, yeah. David, yeah. and then right on the first sentence that you said, this is the report that I yeah, send yeah. over to the auditor on yeah. such a date. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, I mean, look at all, we've gone round and round on this, but I think if, if, if there's adjustments, I guess there's gonna be adjustments every month, is that not so? The goal was continue weekly. We, you know, we give our report, we just gotta be done at a certain time. And then we, we get together and, and make those adjustments. That's, that's what we've done. I, I take note of your comment, Commissioner, and uh, we will copy as uh, I believe, I, I thought that County Treasurer David Bencourt was being copied on any and all correspondence that we have with the Treasurer's Office. Mm -hmm. uh, I will make sure that my auditors know to communicate as well and to make sure that, you know, to copy him on any emails that we have going back with any transactions. And uh, we will take that under your advice. And, Thank and you. you know, there's a discrepancy of 1.3 million or whatever on here. When it gets to the agenda, if there's a discrepancy of some sort, instead of spending 30 minutes doing it, maybe attach a little note saying there's variances on this and this and this accounts and this is where the problem is. I don't know, and, and I don't know, I mean. Only you two know what you all need to know. do. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Well, our, sure our we judge are, is the CPA, so he should know. We do get together <laughs> and, and fix those variances, and, and we've right. gone to the judge. We've both gone to the judge before and says, look, this is the, the final numbers for this year, and the audit, it, the, the external audit, and then the, the just all adjustments were made, and, and, and we get a number. And then we continue for the next year. We, we've done that. We'll continue to do that. Okay. We want to give you all an accurate figure, but it's like a commissioner... Uh, uh, Sanchez said, it's a snapshot of what I have today. Now, yeah, well, the adjustments are gonna be made, but you know, they'll continue and then until. But so, those adjustments will right. also tell us right. a deposit in transit, right. whatever, right. and that's what the auditor's in there to catch. Right. Say, okay, right. this is what's missing. Right. She's gotta tell me, she's gotta give me information that she has, and, and which is what we have been doing. And then we'll make the adjustments, but at a certain time, I have, the snapshot is, this is the amount of money I have now in the accounts. Now, if there's adjustments to be made, she's gonna, she's gonna give me that information and we'll continue making them. And then the next report of the next month is gonna have those adjustments that we, we, we confirmed. And then, you know, but boom, the snapshot again of a, a certain, at the end of the month, that's what I have. But that snapshot should right. contain those adjustments. That's right. I mean, yeah. in other words, once yeah, you they'll file be it, they'll be adjusted you file right. it, she gets it, she reviews it, and she basically checks sure. your work, and, it's, and she should get together with you, so by the time y'all both come here for the meeting, you're able to tell us, these are the discrepancies, right. and this is why. It's like Commissioner yeah. Garza said, right. we fine. shouldn't have to figure out from beginning to end where she's coming from or where you're coming from, 
that's uh, hopefully something that y'all can get on the same page. Yeah. And ideally, you know, we put it on consent because we've already read it, we agree with it, you know, and right. it's a simple. Right. Okay, great, thank you. So can we approve what we got presented? I think you can approve the report and not include this cover letter because it's got inaccurate date on it. I wouldn't just pitch the letter. Well, uh, approve the report with taking note of the fact that the 17th is the day he signed the cover letter, not necessarily the day we received it. I'll second that. Moved by Commissioner Sanchez, second by Commissioner Gatza. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Double Z? No, that was tabled. Okay. Uh, item A, budget amendments, line item transfers, and or salary schedules. I'm sorry? Budget? No, we weren't going to table what? double Z. What? I'm sorry? I think Commissioner Garza was going to abstain, no? Yeah, he abstained. No, I abstained in the original vote. That was it. But it wasn't tabled. Okay. No, it was not tabled. Okay. Somebody woke me up. Budget amendments, line item transfers, and or salary schedules. Judge Commissioners, you have the budget amendments that were placed in front of you. <coughs> Uh, page one of the budget amendment, it is a, um, it is a health grant for $112,076 that we are putting in place for the health department. Uh, the next uh, pages are line item transfers. Uh, there's uh, emergency management, county court at law, county court at law two. They are pretty much basically um, operational budget amendments that are needed. On page two, you will see one that will probably stand out for, to you. It is for the tax office BIT. Uh, they are moving $12,500 of lap salaries into building improvements that they are uh, undertaking. However, that is their uh, BIT account. It is not uh, county money. Uh, then you've got budget amendments for public works, law library, and the rest of the pages are all um, grant funding that is being allocated for um, for grant guidelines. You recommend their approval? Yes. Do I hear a motion to approve? Move to approve. Moved by Commissioner Benavides. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Gatz. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Claims? Claims you have payroll dated March the 4th for $1,627,195.38. You also have warrants number 253. 836 through 254124, warrants number 254128 through 254286. There is a warrant in there that needs to be voided. It's warrant number 253941 to be voided. You also have Caremark uh, health related uh, electronic transfers for $388,882.62 for your approval. Do you recommend their approval? Yes. So moved. Second. By Commissioner Gasso, second by Commissioner Benavides. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Minutes, January the 20th, 2011 regular, February 3rd, 2011 regular, February the 8th, 2011 special. Court members have the opportunity to read the minutes and are ready for their approval. I, I did notice one thing that was off and may not be of note, but on the presentation of the flag to my grandfather, it was a flag that flew over the U.S. Capitol, not the state capitol. And the minutes say state capitol. Just make that no change to the deal. minutes with that correction. Second. Moved by Commissioner Sanchez, second by Commissioner Gatz. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carries. Thank you. Item D, consideration action to, to approve the transfer of the substation building located in Cameron Park used by the DA's office to be used by constables, sheriffs, and other officers approved by the commissioners of the precinct. You're not moving the building, right? You're just moving the use of it. Correct. Okay. The only question I had was on the, on the actual item. Um, it said, uh, da, 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 office approved by the commissioner of precinct two. That should be approved by the commissioner's court. Commissioner's court. Yeah. Yes. And with, with that, that was, change, that was, that was do I hear a motion? So moved. What? Judge. No, I didn't want to, oh, didn't want to make a Marty, comment. Sorry. Yes. You are, you have well, hold on. Let, let me get a motion a second that we can talk. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gatza. Second, Second by Commissioner Sanchez. Discussion? Martha. Uh, I wanted to address to the court that before uh, any transfer of the building takes place that we need to take an inventory to identify the items that are there. 
Uh, I know that was not discussed, but uh, there was an, an inventory that I believe was taken when this particular operation or building was transferred to the DA's office, and uh, I'd like to verify that the furniture that was in there, if it is, was it moved <coughs> out or, or where it is and what happened to okay, it. Okay, we have a motion and second with that caveat that allow Marta the opportunity to go in and have her office inventory uh, the stuff that's there. Well, there, there's only one issue on that, and, and what I want to discuss was the DA's office is currently using it still, and they are looking to move into another place, but they haven't moved yet. So I would just say... How much time do they need? Well, to and that's what I'm saying. We don't know, so I think we need to leave it open that when the DA does have the space, then he moves in, it becomes available. And then she takes the inventory. At that time, yes. There's no doubt. When I talked to uh, the DA, uh, he indicated to me it may be June or July before he's able to, to give the building back to us because he's using it right now. And uh, so we have some time. There's well, no we doubt. So we're just going to approve. I want it approved that, we, that the commission's court approves the action but not set a date to do it. And I'll bring it back to the commission oh, okay. for initial for the date at the time there that we're ready. We'll with, say within 30 days before. But I know for sure I'll bring it back to, to the. Well, you know what? Just just talk with Martha, or whenever I guess, yeah. or somebody talk to we her when, when she goes out to do the inventory. Sure, but I just don't want to push the DA out if he's not, not in not a new place that. yet. No, no. Well, the motion Why not? was when he leaves. When he leaves. Right. Yeah, right. That was my second. Okay, good. When he leaves. All in favor? Of any further discussion? That's all. Thank you. All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item carries. Thank you. Item E, consider. Oh, with the change on the commissioner's court. Item E, consideration approval of, of uh, MOU between Cameron County and the Brownsville Urban System for Public Transportation. Judge, uh, can uh, we Mr. Table? Water has requested a table. Yes. Okay. By here, motion to table. So moved. By Commissioner Hernandez, second by Commissioner Sanchez. I mean, I'm sorry, Commissioner Hernandez. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item carries. Item F, discussion of possible action regarding funding options for capital improvement projects. Judge, uh, Commissioner, I place this item on the agenda to have a discussion with the court. Um, there's a couple of capital improvement projects that um, we need to look at funding options uh, so that we can either complete projects um, uh, that are in progress, um, one of which is the Odyssey, uh, the judicial software integration uh, program that we're doing. Um, if you all recall, a couple of years ago when we sold bonds, uh, we only funded half of the cost, so we've got the other half of the cost to fund. Um, then we also have, um, in working with TxDOT, two roads that um, are partially funded uh, by TxDOT, uh, probably about five or six million dollars um, in total for both roads, um, and, but we need a match uh, from the county. Um, and then we've had some discussions um, a couple of years ago, our counterparts in Mexico, on the on, on the Mexican side, on the Gateway Bridge, they installed a canopy on the pedestrian walkway. Uh, we never did our half, uh, but you know that's something that, that we might look at. Um, we have the expansion of the Veterans Bridge as well. Uh, even though we got um, federal funds, there's a portion uh, that the county will be responsible for. So. Um, kind of wanted to have a discussion with the court, um, see how to proceed, and I'm sure there's other other project improvements that are needed. But Pete, how, how much money are, are y'all looking at to to appropriate for capital improvements? Not sure, but uh, Dave Gordon, our financial advisor, is here. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of wanted to start the dialogue with the court. Uh, start, you know, we've we've got a list of of some potential projects. Uh, you know, they're not, not fully priced, but just, you know, to give the court an idea. And then I'm sure there's other improvements, you know, that are out there that we probably need to consider. So can I want to, Dave, well, to, to... Pete, I, I think that if we're going to be looking at something of this sort in capital improvements, that we should look also at doing some ROA money, as we had in the past. It, you know, the, the money that, the, not ROA, you know, sorry. The, uh, the bond, project roadmap, right? Yeah, project roadmap, because that that particular fund has pretty well dried out, and I think maybe a couple of months ago we saw the spreadsheet of what those ten million dollars that the county had invested 
translated to in, in today was like 180 million? No, uh, it was, we had invested 9 million and we got 275 million. 275 million, well, something, I mean, which, and I think that, you know, there are some projects still pending from Project Roadmap that have not been addressed. Right. And, and I think that we need to include some revenues into that particular uh, account. Yeah, and, and, then, and I looked at, at that spreadsheet and, and there was a couple of projects that the court uh, a couple of years had prioritized that you know we didn't we didn't get to fund. Uh, one was um, the um, old Dallas Road from FM 511 to Highway 100, and that one we we bought the right of way with Project Roadmap, but um, we never came to an agreement with TxDOT. That's an off-system road. Um, we never came to an agreement <coughs> with TxDOT, but. Half of that is inside county, half is inside city. I've had some discussions uh, with city management this week on the city's participation. Um, then the only other one that I could, could, the only other one that I saw that was on the spreadsheet that the court had made a priority was Vermilion Road from uh, Highway 4 to FM 802. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. We did a, a minor study, uh, but then again, you know, we didn't, we didn't proceed um, with that project because of the lack of, of funding on the project roadmap, but those those two projects um, are out there. Well, and then um, the extension of 510? The San Jose Ranch Road, yes. That's right. the third one. We have a study on that one as well. Right. Um, yeah. So there's, there's some other projects that have a potential that uh, we need not to lose at this point because... Yeah, the urgency is, is we've got two projects. We've got Primera Road, and US 77 parallel corridor that there is TxDOT funding. And if we don't proceed, then we'll lose that funding uh, from TxDOT, so. And those are the uh, two that are ready? Primera is, is ready to go. Primera is environmentally cleared right away in place. Uh, the city, um, I think, is beginning to do re utility relocation. Uh, TxDOT will have their money ready uh, in September, September 1st, so uh, if we're not, if the county's not ready by then, then you know we'll lose that money. Then US 77 parallel corridor from where Dixieland Road ended on um, Rangerville, Rangerville Road uh, <coughs> to I believe it's um, 509. 509. Um, that project we have an environmental document that we had prepared, but because um, it didn't have a CSJ number from TxDOT, we couldn't submit the environmental document to TxDOT for their review. Um, since then, TxDOT and the Harlan and San MPO have identified funds for the project. So now we have a CSJ number. We have, now we can submit the document, but, and, and y'all approved an item earlier, to update the environmental document to meet the current law. That, that funding from TxDOT is available, I believe, August of 2012, which gives us enough time to clear the project environmentally and, and acquire the right of way that will be needed. So and those if, two. And if we don't do that, we lose, lose the, the funding. Fund. Yeah, so those, those two are the, the ones that are ready to go. Uh, then, like I said, Old Dallas Road um, and Vermilion, you know, we, we can work something out with the city of Brownsville as well. But, um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, again, as the commissioner mentioned, we invested $9 million and we leveraged $275 million, so we got like $30 um, to right. our dollar. Uh -huh. um, and as I said, I'm sure there's, there's other, you know, there are about a, a year and a half, two years ago, we purchased the La Saica store, uh, the building, um, where we haven't been able to get uh, the necessary funding to renovate it. Uh, so that might be another one that we, we might be looking at. Uh, we, we've yeah. talked about potentially um, acquiring the Pacheco building. Uh, but today, I kind of just wanted to start the dialogue with the court, have our financial advisor, um, our auditor, uh, provide some input on, on different funding options that might be available to us. So, Dave. Good evening, Judge, uh, Commissioners. Dave Gordon with Estrada Hinojosa. We're the financial advisor to the uh, county. And as Pete's passing that out, um, as, as Pete just mentioned, uh, he had asked me to come down and just kind of talk about uh, a couple of options in terms of, of what you're looking at in terms of what the tax rate impact would be and the other uh, financial impacts would be uh, for various funding options. Uh, if you look on their page one, 
those are some of the projects that you guys were just discussing. Um, again, just, just something to put down on paper just to have some preliminary idea about uh, what you might be considering. Um, you, you'll see in those projects, you, you talk about some of the road projects, uh, judicial software, and a number of other things. You've also got uh, items number five and six there that would likely be self-supporting from the, uh, the bridge system and not be supported by taxes directly, <coughs> although that means, of course, we'd have to backfill those revenues uh, from, from the bridge system with, with other revenues. If we flip over to, um, to page two, just to kind of give you an idea about where uh, the county is uh, debt-wise right now, uh, if you look at your, um, I just wanted to explain this spreadsheet a little bit. Um, on the left-hand side, we have the, uh, the net assessed valuation, $14.5 billion, and uh, that's, of course, been flat the last couple of years, and um, <coughs> so right now we're, we're, we're just showing this as flat going forward. If you look in uh, the fourth column there, existing debt, you can see the debt service that, uh, it, that the county has right now on your various obligations, and kind of have a number, number of columns there to, to, uh, to add in the additional debt. Um, and if you look at the middle of the spreadsheet, you'll notice that, again, uh, some part of this would probably be self-supporting from the bridge system. Uh, you can see What's then in the- I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last comment. Well, the, the, um, a couple of the, uh, of the proposed projects would likely be supported by bridge revenue. Um, ultimately, you're kind of taking it from one okay. hand, putting the, in- The 22% is what you're talking about, right? Yes, yeah, so assuming that if you did all the all of the projects on that list, just okay. like they're shown, then about 22% would okay. be self-supporting. Uh, if you did less of those projects, then of course less, less would be self-supporting. It just depends. Yeah. Um, again, the one caveat is if you're if you're using bridge revenue to support that, but right now you're using that bridge revenue for something else, yeah. then you're still going to have to work that through your budget. Yeah. Uh, you do have um, debt that's currently supported again by your park system as well as your bridge system. Uh, there's also an opportunity for refunding here or refinancing some of your debt that I wanted to talk about. And then you can see as we work our way across the spreadsheet that your, your current uh, limited tax, tax rate is um, about 2.5 uh, pennies. And uh, if you look in the, in the far right-hand column, we we're showing that the, the tax rate impact over the next four years, and if you look at the bottom of that page, you'll see that it's, it's less than um, 0.2, or just over 0.2 um, cents. So right now, for all intents and purposes, the way to, to interpret that is if your tax, if your assessed valuation stayed the same based on the, the debt profile that you currently have, you really don't have any type of a, a tax rate increase that's coming up or, or decrease. Okay, it's, 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 for all intents and purposes, it's flat. So it's, the end result is a cost of about two-tenths of a penny. Well, I haven't, I haven't shown you the impact of, of adding in these additional uh, projects yet. I'm just saying where you are today, um, with the debt that you currently have, you, you're, you're basically are flat. You're, you know, next year you wouldn't have to have a tax rate increase. Of course, it does depend on what happens with your assessed valuation. Yeah, yeah. But over the, over the next couple of years, your, your debt is basically flat. Um, so what we did there was we just, again, not knowing which of these projects the court would, would approve. I know you're still working through some of them. Uh, Pete had initially asked us just to kind of set up a, uh, and show you the impact of a couple of different sizes of these. And so what we've done on page three, uh, as you can see, if you issued five million of debt or, or seven and a half million, and then we'll show you a couple of other options on the next page, uh, you can see what the debt service would be in, in that first column, for example, for five million. And um, one of the things to just explain is, you know, in terms of the, of the market, the market has been relatively erratic. Um, we've seen a big run up in rates since last fall, although they started to drop over here in the last couple of weeks. But what we're showing in here basically is is uh, current market rates plus about 25 basis points. Um, but what you can see as you work across the page is basically uh, your tax rate Im impact over the next four years would be about uh, 0 0.29 um, two cents. Um, or basically the difference adding this on would be uh, less than, um, it'd be 0 0.0008 actually would be the impact of this particular issuance of, of five million if, if uh, three and a half million was supported by the bridge. Uh, the next option was um, if you did seven and a half million worth of projects, it would be uh, slightly um, higher, uh, 4.3 cents total um, over the, or I'm sorry, 0.43 cents total over the next uh, uh, four years. Again, those, part of that is already kind of built into where you are. And then um, if we flip to page four, you can see the options for, for 10 and, and 15 and a half, or 15.75 million, which is the, the total of the projects we've listed. Um, so to kind of summarize, really, in terms of, the, of these options, 
they're, they're affordable by the county. You have a uh, significant amount of capacity in terms of your tax rate to do these projects. There obviously would be some tax rate impact. Um, and if you chose to support um, a couple of the software packages, or I'm sorry, the bridge uh, uh, packages from bridge system revenues, then you'd have to offset, offset those. So you'd certainly do have capacity to do these if you want. Um, the county right now has um, two AA ratings and, and one rating in the single A category. Um, I will say that um, you know, there's no guarantee with the issuance of this debt you'll be able to keep your ratings. We're, we're certainly ho hopeful of that. Uh, the county has, has done uh, a good job in terms of managing its finances. We have seen some stress on, on the assessed valuation, which obviously many places in the country have right now. Um, and I was talking to your auditor uh, earlier today ab about your, your fund balance, which is something that you, you might want to um, concentrate on, particularly as you kind of move into a realm where you're going to issue some additional debt, because that will be something that the, the rating entities will focus on. Um, so are there any kind of, before we talk about some refunding options, I know I kind of gave you a lot of information. I guess, the, again, the long and the short of it is that you certainly have the capacity to do these. It would be less than a penny impact if you did all of these projects, significantly less than a penny. Um, again, depends on partly what happens with your assessed valuation. Any, any kind of general questions on, on the new money piece? Uh, there are there are a couple of refunding options we've been tracking for quite some time, um, and I just want to explain a couple of issues that, that bear on what refunding we might be able to bring to you. And, and Let again, me ask you a question before you go there. Does refunding options uh, cause adverse effects to your rating? No. In general, if we if we do a refunding for savings, you're going to lower your debt service. So in in, in theory, it would it would help. Now, so when you do a lot of refundings, it doesn't affect negatively your rating. No, if you're if you're actually if you're doing the refunding with the idea of restructuring your debt, then then it, it potentially could. But if you're doing the refunding, you pay it off, to, then it helps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the, generally speaking, the goal of a refunding is to reduce the, your debt service costs in, in every year of the uh, of the debt. It's as long as you're not stretching out the debt or or restructuring it somehow, okay. then it, it's not going to adversely impact you. Okay. Now it is an opportunity for them to come in and re-rate you, uh, right. whereas otherwise, what, what will happen is it just they'll, continues. Well, periodically, the rating agencies, will, in fact, Fitch has already kind of reached out to try to do a, um, a review of your rating, but periodically they'll rate you. But otherwise, quite honestly, when you issue fixed-rate um, fixed debt, the only real impact of your rating is when you go to issue debt again, because the bondholder really is assuming the risk that you, your rating changes. Thank you. Um, so there, there are a number of opportunities for refundings. Again, we've been, we've been monitoring this for quite some time. Um, one of the things that, that is kind of a bearing of, of refunding right now is that there's a, there's a tax rule that allows um, um, issuers of debt to issue $10 million of, of, of debt in any given calendar year um, and, and declare it as bank qualified. Uh, if you're able to declare debt as bank qualified, you're going to receive favorable rates. Uh, now, that, that $10 million of debt includes any capital leases, which you're at, it says in here $2 million, but I, in talking to you, um, um, Mr. Villarreal, earlier, I guess it's going to be two and a half million in terms of capital leases you're going to do this year. So you really have about seven and a half million of more capacity to do bank qualified debt this year. Um, if you go beyond that, then then it would be non BQ, which it, it shouldn't preclude you from doing the, the capital projects that you need to do. But it does have a bearing on the refunding because it may make it so that the refunding doesn't work. Uh, that's probably more detailed than you wanted, but in terms of actually bringing a refunding that works, we kind of need to decide on the on the on the new money um, projects first, figure out where you want to go, what you think you're going to do this year, and then we can bring back some real options. You do have on page six uh, three different series of bonds that really are, um, are potential candidates right now. You have some other series that are kind of outside the window of when they're going to work. Um, you've got the, the 2002 COs, uh, the 2002 unlimited tax uh, road bonds, and then the 2004 COs. Uh, now, if w one um, small twist is if we did, if we refunded the uh, the 2002 unlimited tax road bonds, we would probably be moving them from the limited tax to the unlimited tax, um, which is not necessarily ideal. But you're really just moving it from one tax to the other. Um, on page um, seven, for example, I showed you what the refunding would produce right now if, if we were able to do this all as bank qualified which would be a, a two and a half million dollar refunding, let's say. Um, and it would produce uh, savings of, uh, if you look at the right hand side there, of, uh, of just shy of 5%, uh, total savings of 151,000, uh, which would represent savings of about $13,000 a year. 
Um, again, it's hard to really kind of quantify other refunding opportunities until we figure out some of the new money pieces. Uh, for a while there, uh, any non-bank qualified refunding was not working just because of where rates were. But again, uh, as I mentioned, they've come down a little bit over the last few weeks. So there's a likelihood that you know, if, if rates continue to fall, that, that we would see a refunding that would work. And we could do that refunding at the same time as you issue any, <coughs> any new debt, um, or we could do it at, at some other time. Um, and I know, so I know again that you're working through the, the, you know, the process of figuring out what your CIP is, you know, what you want to do, what projects are worthwhile, those types of things. Uh, whenever you um, gave us the go ahead, we would need approximately 60 days, depending upon the schedule uh, that you had to actually go out and, and, and issue the debt. Um, as, as you know, with certificate uh, obligation, we have to post notice for 30 days. Um, and, there, and, and of course, they're subject to petition during that period of time. Um, and other than that, we would just need to work through the steps with the rating agencies, preparing the offering document, um, things of that nature. So are there any, any, any questions? Comments? Yes, I have yes, a sir. question. <laughs> the estimated refunding results, are those inclusive or exclusive of cost to do the transaction? They would be, they would be <coughs> inclusive of the cost. Inclusive of cost. Inclusive, yes. We wouldn't, any refunding we ever show you is going to have all of the cost built in. One advantage of doing a refunding at the same time as you do the certificates of obligation, if, if you decide to do those, um, is that you will save a little bit on the cost of issuance, uh, primarily on, on rating fees and some other fees <coughs> that you'll be doing them at, in the, at the same time. Also, the, the, the preparation of the, of the offering document yeah. would be, there'd be some savings there as well. Um, well, no, that answers my question. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. So we need to work on the... Uh... Yeah, I just need to get some direction from the court if you know, we want to move forward or... You I, know. Th I, th I think, I personally think we don't have a choice but to do, I mean, it, it would be not fiduciary responsible if we don't try to seek those funds that are out there that can benefit us or lose them by not acting. Right. I, I think that we also need to make sure this is the entire list. Definitely. This is, this, so I think we need to continue, but this can't be the final. Right. No, this is just yeah. preliminary. Okay, no problem. Okay. Do I hear a motion to acknowledge Mr. Zapulueta's uh, report? So moved. By Commissioner Benavides, saying by Commissioner Gatz. Any discussion? All those in favor, please come up by saying aye. 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 Opposed, Adam carries. Adam G, discussion and possible action to allow vendors to place recycling bins throughout county park sites. Judge, commissioners, <clears throat> we had a, a request um, from a gentleman who was interested in, in placing some recycling bins uh, throughout the parks. Um, and uh, we've handed out a packet, I think it was in a white envelope. Um, the um, company is UR Recovery, <clears throat> and um, we check with um, our sol solid waste contractor, and um, we got a letter from them uh, saying that they they had no problems with us putting these these recycling bins in the park. Um, I just need Will to they get reduce the rate for lower amounts. Well, it would reduce the amount, <laughs> the, uh, the the quantity that we would um, the the, the waste. For them. <coughs> but one of the things that we I wanted to get direction from uh, the court was first of all is is um, if we're interested in doing this and second of all um, do we um, want to uh, enter into an agreement with them or do we want to bid it out um, how do we want to handle well, it's not costing us anything no, is it's not it? costing us anything so what what, I mean, what would you bid I mean just a location for them to set the the, the bins there so I mean I, if we don't have to bid it out I mean. I mean, I'm just glad someone's coming forward and, and, and yeah, doing this for us because it's something that, that we've talked about at the commission level for quite some time about recycling and, you know, we, I don't think we do enough uh, to recycle. So I'm, I'm just glad that we're given the opportunity and um, to begin this endeavor. So, I mean, I don't, I don't have any questions unless you all do or Once Rachel does. You would, put these, you would put these out at all the county parks? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it first, it first of all, it started off with, with the idea of placing them at uh, Isla Blanca, mm -hmm. at the pavilions. And then we discussed other parks that we have, uh, you know, Andy Bowie, uh, E.K. Atwood, and then, uh, of course, the, the parks that are on the mainland. So that's why we included as, a, as uh, all the parks. Um, I believe that's the way we worded the agenda. Uh, throughout the county park sites. What, what's legal? I mean, do we have 
can we do this? Yes, we could do like a license format the way we allow um, like the shoe <coughs> shine guy to just, you know, set up and, and shine shoes in, in the county courthouse and we can allow them to just set up the bins and if that's something that the court would like to, you know, to do, we could, we could do in the license format. Do we need to get approval from GLO if we're going to have them in any of the parks I don't know. on the island? No, because there's no there's no expenditure. We're not there's no cost to us, right. and, and uh, I mean <coughs> there is a cost to, to the gentleman uh, and his labor. But um. I, I just want to ask a question. Sometimes you get people that want to circumvent what they're not supposed. Well, what they're supposed to do. What if people go and dump other types of trash into your bins? What are you going to do at that point? I mean, we wouldn't be held. Responsible for it, would you? No, hi. First of all, uh, <coughs> good afternoon. My name's Eloy Rodriguez. I'm with uh, UR Recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, for that question, um, they have certain sizes for the holes. Oh, okay. So only specific uh, specific things can fit in there. Like they can't put TVs or anything big, just specific items. If they put trash, I'm going to have to deal with that. I'm going to be doing the sorting out. Okay. I think it's a win-win, so I, I appreciate you taking the time and you know to offering Cameron County the service, and hopefully at some point we can expand it to to include other other county locations, not just the parks, but other county locations as, as well. You can, as you can see in the picture, sorry, uh, as you can see in the pictures, uh, we we have some set up in Port Isabel already, and uh, that's only two pictures. That's at the lighthouse, and uh, the other one it's at. <coughs> I don't, I don't remember. The, well, that's just a picture of it, like during the day, and the other ones, that's when we finish doing the work of anchoring down. We do anchoring down, so I will have to speak to somebody that will let me, give me permission to set them up and where I can anchor them down. I don't want them being taken away. And okay. there'd be no advertisement done on the containers or anything like that? No, just, just some education, actually. Uh, in the future, I'm gonna put some education, what they're doing by, when they recycle each uh, paper or can or plastic bags, plastic bottles. I'm so it's going to be paper, aluminum, yeah. or metal, and, and plastic? How about styrofoam? Styrofoam, uh, we can switch it up as soon as we get rid of the bags. We're probably going to start doing styrofoam. OK. All right. Any, any other comments or questions? No? Thank you very much. Do I hear a motion to uh, allow uh, well, the vendor to place the I would say to, to license your license legal. Well, Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Do I hear a motion so to bring it back to the license agreement back to legal? Moved by Commissioner Garza. Second, Second by Commissioner Benavides. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item H, consideration possible action to approve general fund equipment list for financing. Judge and commissioners, um, you should have a packet uh, of information for this item. We've included the list of the um, equipment that was requested by the different departments, um, and that's towards the back. Um, the first page, what we did is a summary of the, of the request that we received. Um, as you can see, for the jail infirmary, um, got a request of about 1.7 million. Um, patrol cars request totaling to 770,000. Uh, solar grant match, 427,000. Building maintenance uh, requested 200,000. Computers, uh, the requests were 190,000, that's computers uh, and printers. Radios, 160,000. Scanners, um, audiovisual, 150,000. Courthouse security, uh, this is the judicial courthouse, 106,000. Patrol cameras, radar, 75,000. Scanners needed uh, at the district clerk for the Odyssey program, 45,000. Bulletproof vests, and then juvenile uh, probation department. So we got about 3.9 million in requests. Um, 
got with the auditor's office um, and developed a, um, a list um, that we're calling the recommended equipment list uh, that we're presenting to you all. Well, basically, I think you, you start with the parameter of how much money you have to allocate, and that's we, the 1.2 1. million. 1.3. 1.3 million is the amount of available money right. that, that we can utilize. And we got 3.9 in requests. Right, so and so, so from that, from, from that 1.3 or 1.2 something, that's where you all got together and just kind of prioritized. Correct, and then the okay. court, if we go to the second page, um, the court had already approved the solar grant match for 427,000. Then the court had also approved the courthouse security at the judicial courthouse, so that's the 106,000. Um, and then the patrol cars, um, we're recommending 294. <clears throat> On the solar grant match, weren't we using the savings? Not no. necessarily the equipment? <clears throat> we'll recap it later, but we have to pay for it up front. Okay, so, so the savings aren't taken into consideration here? Oh, you don't know what they're going to be? Well, we have uh, a pretty good They're projected. On what we approve. Uh, I think there was, there was a plan at one time being discussed by a, the, vendor? the vendor who would finance the cash, the, the match that would be required, and it was going to be, the, the plan was for the vendor to put the money up front, and we were going to be paying right. the vendor the savings as we were earning it, or rather saving it on a, on a per annum basis. But this is a cash match that is required of this grant. And the we court don't have a choice. This, we have to pay right, it. Right, and the court approved this on the equipment list. Uh, the savings that I must have been asleep that day. The savings that's going to be generated is just going to cut down on operations. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have my coffee. I wasn't here. If you look at the third page, that is the recommended um, patrol cars. Um, and we've got the breakdown, the Constable Precinct 1, um, two four by four trucks, uh, uh, Constable Precinct 4, two, vehicle, two patrol cars, uh, Constable Precinct 5, one patrol car, uh, Constable Precinct 6, two uh, patrol cars, Sheriff, four patrol cars, and then the Health Department, one, one truck. Um, so that, that amount carried over. Uh, building maintenance, we're allocating $40,000 uh, and, and uh, reserve that. Um, computers, uh, we're doing what we did last year is we're reserving uh, 50,000. I got with the computer center um, and they believe that, that not all of the requests that were made for computers were necessarily needed. Uh, so what we decided to do is reserve $50,000 and then treat them individually um, as we get the requests. Uh, bulletproof vest, um, we thought this was something that, you know, needed to be included. And actually, we only got like $40,000 in requests, but in, in talking to the auditor, we felt the, the figure was closer to 60000 I believe there were some departments that didn't submit requests um, and, and would need the bulletproof vest. Um, Scanners that the district clerk needs for the Odyssey program, uh, 45,000. Uh, jail infirmary, um, again, they submitted a request of 1.7 million and we're allocating 40,000. Uh, and their request was, the majority of it was not equipment related, it was more, more capital improvement related. So um, we're recommending that we reserve 40,000 um, and then they can prioritize. The computer center, uh, $40,000, and that's for scanners, uh, servers that are needed. Um, camera system at uh, the tax department for their Los Fresnos building and the La Feria building. Um, juvenile probation, uh, we're allocating 12000 um, And then we're allocating 20 laptops uh, for the sheriff department for the Odyssey program. Um, vehicle maintenance. Uh, software package that the auditor is recommending uh, that we uh, implement at the vehicle maintenance department. Uh, video conferencing for the county court at laws. Um, and then one item that, that's not in here that we recommend is the auto visual by, um, that was requested by Judge uh, Nelson. Um, so if we add that uh, 50,000, it brings the total to um, 1,324,000. Again, you know, we had a, a hard, difficult time because we got nearly 4 million requests and we only got 1.3 million, so uh, not sure if the court is, is um, 
comfortable moving forward or if, if you all want to look at it and then bring it back at the next meeting. But um, um, well, we need to, especially things like bulletproof vests need to be moved on right away. Yeah, there were several that, that you know, we need to get done and get them out of the way. The patrol cars, same thing, that lead time, uh, it's probably a couple of months, so we would need to, to move on that as well. Well, I, w I would say we probably want to maybe look at some of these before we just, I mean, on the bulletproof vest, they requested 40,000 and our, we said 60 because we looked at the cost and what they were looking to get is actually going to cost more or I think there might have been some give departments that, and we know they're going to need them. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Free up that money to use right. elsewhere. Okay. And that'll cover not just the sheriff, but the constables and law enforcement. All law enforcement. Right. Okay, good. I'd also request that the court uh, consider that we're already in February and this list is, well, in March really, and this list is barely coming up for approval. Uh, by the time the equipment gets ordered, that it gets received, and then that we get the equipment financing documents in place, <coughs> it, this alone is probably going to put us right toward the end of our county fiscal year, and we would like to get these lease agreements, at least get them all finished and set up by uh, August, no later than August, in order to us, <coughs> for us to be able to report them correctly and not have any overlaps in our reporting. Why are we just getting to this? I guess if this was approved for last for this year's budget and no, this wasn't approved. This is coming to the court for approval. Oh, right. But we've we've when have we had this? We've had this money that we we don't have the money. We're gonna go for financing. We finance the equipment purchases. Okay, so none of this was part no. of the budget. No, none oh, at all. Okay, no. Fair enough. Move to approve. Second. Okay, so I hear a motion to approve in a second the list as presented. Does that include the uh, the audio visual for the 138? That that was not in there. I added that there was a 50,000. So when we add that, the total was 1. 1 million 324,000, and we had 1.3 million. So yes. it's well within. Right, so, so so where we can get the the 24,000 comes from where? <coughs> a lot of these are just estimates. Estimate. So okay. it might, it might be late. So our cap is 1.3 million. Right. So okay. we're right at, at that. All right. Okay, so then the motion includes to add the whatever number, the, uh, the audio visual. 138th. So it takes it yeah. to 1, three hundred twenty-four thousand estimate, but you're going to cap it at 1.3. Right, and then like Marta said, you know, if okay. we can get grant money for a bulletproof vest or okay. if we get any other grant money that we can substitute, we'll do that. All right, I had a motion, a second. Motion by Commissioner uh, Benavides, second by Commissioner Gatz. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Item carried. Item I, consideration of approval of naming the Highway 48 boat ramp after Jaime Jorge Zapata. Do I hear a motion? Judge, uh, before we, we make a motion, I wanted to thank you personally for hosting this most important and meaningful item on our agenda today. <coughs> I believe it's most fitting to rename the Highway 48 boat ramp for Special Agent Jaime Jorge Zapata. He was definitely a courageous and a noble young man, and a tribute uh, in naming this boat ramp for him is certainly is most deserving. I contacted the family today, or spoke to the mother who I went to school with, and uh, I learned something this morning that I did not know. Um, we were proposing to do the ceremony on May the 7th, which when I heard about it made me feel rather warm. Um, you know that uh, my husband worked real hard to try and keep this boat ramp open because prior to his passing, uh, we had gotten word that they were gonna close it. They were considering closing it because the parks department 
the Texas Parks and Wildlife and TxDOT wanted to close it down. At his insistence and nagging, probably Javier, este, uh, they found a way of filing for some grants. And uh, unfortunately, he passed on before he found out that the grants were going to be awarded. And so since then, we were able to go ahead and make improvements to this Highway 48 boat ramp. Well, um, I think one of the reasons that May the 7th was being considered was because this was a day that uh, Special Agent Zapata would be celebrating his birthday. And I guess God works in mysterious ways, but that is precisely the day that he would be celebrating his birthday. So having said that, I, um, I make a motion that we rename the Highway 40 bo 48 boat ramp for Special Agent Jaime Jorge Zapata. Second. Moved by Commissioner Benavides, second by Commissioner Hernandez. Um, this kind of discussion, let me just uh, thank you, Commissioner, for your, for your kind words. Um, it's ironic, when I went by to visit the family on, on Monday, um, Mrs. Zapata walked out and I saw her and I said, you know, I know you. And I didn't realize who she was until after I saw her and it turns out I, I, I knew the father. Uh, and we talked a little bit about, you know, uh, Jaime and, and the fishing and, and all that good stuff. And, and the, the, the date of May the 7th came up. Um, and I told him really whatever date was convenient for everyone, uh, the ICE agents that, 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 uh, that took me by had a little concern with that particular date only because uh, there's a memorial in, in, in Washington National that they wanted the family to attend and they're going to get back to us and find out if, if that day you know, would work. I hope it does work I and mean, we're going to do everything we can to get it to work. Uh, and I'm waiting to hear from them tomorrow, no later than tomorrow, they get, see, that's a go-to go date. Because if, if it is the go-to date, and I, and, I, and I really hope that it is, that's, that's uh, Saturday, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be, it'd be beneficial to, not only to make sure the public gets invited, but, but get, get uh, some, of the, some of the people that, that I've talked to personally uh, expressing their concerns. You know, Governor Perry expresses concerns when I was with him last uh, a week ago, this past Monday. Uh, Senator Cornyn and, and, and Senator Hutchison uh, are waiting to hear when they did date is so they could also, and then plus all the ICE people that want to come down. Uh, as soon as I know that that is the date that, that does not conflict with the family and what they want to do in Washington, um, you know, we will put that out and we'll start working on, on a, a um, a plaque of some sort. Uh, I spoke to Pete about it, and uh, I'd like the family to come up with, you know, with the appropriate wording, maybe even a a, a, a carved out etching of of, uh, of Jaime's mm -hmm. profile or his face. So uh, we have a little bit of work to do, uh, a little bit of time to do it in, but I, I think it's uh, appropriate. I can't think of any um, facility that that uh, or any person that that deserves a very, very nominal recognition like this. The family, as you know, were very humbled by it. They were honored by it. Uh, and so I'm just glad that we're able to do this one little thing, you know, for, for, uh, for this young man who, whose life came to a sudden halt. Um, but with that, um, I want to thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Item J, discussion and possible action regarding the agreement for leasing the tea hangers at the Cameron County Airport. Um, uh, judge and commissioners, I reviewed the, the form lease agreement. I had no problems with it, if that's the, the form that we want to use. So you're okay? I'm okay with it. All right, do I hear a motion? Okay. Uh, make sure that we have in the agreement, I haven't seen it on the form lease, but each hanger is numbered each storage unit is numbered. There is one ADA compliant hanger that is required that we need to make sure we reserve out for ADA compliance. If, uh, for the court members that have not been out to the airport recently, 
and for the court members that have never been out to the airport, I would encourage you to uh, make a visit over there. Uh, we have a first class facility there in the tea hangars. As of tomorrow morning, the terminal building that we've approved will be finished. It's already all done. If the colors are to the liking of the court, me and my staff chosen, and if they're not, it must have been Pete and David, <laughs> you know. They're not maroon, so you know, it, was, Tom, it wasn't me. If, but, if they uh, were, we'd paint but, it. You know, it's, there's been a, quite a transformation that has occurred out there that I, I would encourage all of you to go and, and see. But I think that, you know, the tea hangers are, are first class. They're, they're hangers that uh, are operational electronically by one person. Everything is, <coughs> you know, I mean, just top notch, you know. I mean, so please make it a point to go over there and visit. Hopefully they'll be leased out very promptly. The only thing that we were waiting for was this agreement from Gildia to allow us to proceed with it. That's a motion? That's a motion. Please. Moved by Commissioner Gatz. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Hernandez. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carries. Last item, <coughs> consideration. There, there, for those here that are Longhorns, the, the, the outline color, you know, for it is burnt orange. Smart move. How come? <laughs> consideration and direction by Commissioner's Court concerning applications for bank depository contract for Cameron County. Mike, we got one bid. So that solves that problem. That solves it. <laughs> Yeah, but it concerns me that that this is, a, this is the first time that I know of that we've only received one bid from a depository. And um, thank you. So there's really no. So we got two choices: accept the bid, maybe do a two-year contract, or do it, go out and bid again. I just don't see the point in getting bid again. Okay, so tell me, Mike, what, what's going on? What what happened? I. I checked with the banks to try and get the feel as to what's going on. Is it the market? Is it the economy? What, what's the reasoning behind it? And these are the replies I'm getting from the banks. Uh, over and beyond that, I called some other counties. Uh, the last purchasing conference, I had uh, some some feelings from some of the counties that there were some problems on the horizon with banks. There was some one. I didn't hear you some problems with the banks as far as the bank depository bid because they weren't getting too much participation or competition in the bid. I reached out today, I spoke to Hidalgo County. They, their bank depository bid was no different to ours. They, they, they gave it adequate time, it was out there. They received one bid back. It was the, the only bank, that their current bank, it was First National Bank. However, as you see here, I spoke to First National Bank and I, you know, I tried to get a, a feel as to why they, you know, they bid for Hidalgo and they weren't interested in the county. And basically what I'm mm -hmm. getting from quite a few banks is public funds at this time is really not a, a, a profitable market in, in the banking industry. Uh, the, 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 the budgets are tight. They're, they're looking at efficiency, profitability and they see the time invested more in the private sector yields a greater return on, on, on their in labor and their investment. And they, they, they feel uh, public funds are, 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 are difficult for them at this point. They said maybe in a few <coughs> years it may improve, but the market right now is, is, is very uh, difficult for public funding investments. And most of the banks, I had a couple of banks here that I spoke to and what I'm getting from them is they're just not, we're not their market. They're smaller banks, they don't have the branches that we would need, or they, 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 they don't handle accounts of this size and magnitude. So they're just not interested because it's not their niche. So the only bank we could get a bid from is from Spain? The only bank we got a bid from is the current bank at this time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. That's a Note that for the record. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Does, did this um, did this bid also include the ability to do the electronic payment with yes, the sir. cards, so we could take care of all our employees? The auditor and okay. 
Mike, on the, um, I guess, I, there's not a whole lot to negotiate in terms of with one bank, but there, there's been concerns that, were, that have been expressed by several departments in terms of um, things that the bank may or are not doing. Just make sure that you iron those out. Just because they're the only bid uh, does not mean that, that they can continue doing what you know, what, what they're doing. We'd like to request the court's approval to sit down with the committee that the court approved and the bank and And, and, and just iron out, iron out those things. Okay. okay. So moved. All right. Wait, uh, uh, are you going to do two year or four year? I, I would suggest we do a two year contract. I agree. Okay, so uh, moved by Commissioner Garza, second by Commissioner Hernandez to award a two year contract or a, and give you the authority to negotiate and iron out those, those, those soft spots that we have okay. with them. Okay. To, to the committee's recommendation. Okay. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, item carried. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Commissioner Hernandez, second, second by Commissioner Gatsa. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? God save this honorable court.